The other day I was watching a news report on funeral directors in New York City, and the fact that it is hard and overwhelming to be a funeral director right now. The funeral industry is struggling to keep up with the rapidly increasing death toll caused by the coronavirus pandemic already. And all the comments were like, funeral directors are crooks. I bet they're happy about the coronavirus. More money for them. Look, do I want you to continue to interrogate the structural issues behind the funeral industrial complex and money being made off low-income families? Yes, it is my greatest wish. You could learn about it in quarantine, like I learned how to play chess. The horsey goes in an L. But right now, funeral directors aren't having a great time and making a bunch of money. They're burnt out and exhausted, not swimming in their coronavirus money like Scrooge McDuck. Remember, funeral homes are structured to make money from the add-ons. The caskets, the embalmings, the wakes, the hearses. And they can't offer any of those things right now. All of a sudden, all they can offer are simple direct cremations. And in the hardest hit cities, they can't even keep up with those. Not even close. Funeral homes all over New York are starting to have to turn people away. The women of International Funeral and Cremation Service in Harlem are known for their lavish services. And now they're having to say, sorry, we can't help you at all. Funeral director Lily Sage Weinrieb said, pulling out all the stops for a funeral? Quote, that's our thing. You want six limos and you want them painted pink? Yes. Now we're like, you want a cremation? I'm sorry, no. You want a burial and you already have a plot and everything? Sorry, no. We don't have any room. I feel like I'm failing families every day. The same thing is happening in other hard-hit cities. Charita Butler, who owns Butler Funeral Home in Detroit, has also started to turn people away. She said, families are just really in a frenzy. It's something I've never seen before, quite honestly. I feel like everybody has PTSD at this point. Again, where is the government? I would like my tax money to go to get these people cremated and buried as quickly and safely as possible, not to a Papa John's pizza bailout. Come on. A big source of stress for funeral homes is the unknowns, especially around safety. The first level of worry is, are all these family members and people coming in for the viewing going to infect me? Because of that, many funeral homes just aren't offering viewings, period. And if they are, they're small viewings limited to only 10 family members. You're seeing funeral homes live stream services. Just embalmed bodies decked out in an empty room, live streaming into the void. Now, if that's your only option as a family, I 100% get it. You'd better believe that if I couldn't be with my family who had died, I would be like, put that camera on my mommy. Just, just leave it running. Leave it running. But it also has a bit of a dystopian vibe. The live stream technology on top of the embalming technology, keeping us distant from the dead body the way that we're distant from everyone and all reality at this time. Joan Newfield Sr., a funeral director in Queens, said, That's it. I'm stopping the viewings. The danger is too much. I want to help these families, but it's gotten too much. The second source of fear and stress is, are these corpses going to infect me? Last week, we saw the first big headlines about a person dying after contracting coronavirus from a corpse. Now, I'm not saying I am skeptical or this is untrue. It did come from an academic journal, not a news source like wackynews.biz or something. But it does sound like one of those stories, man cremated alive, woman impregnated by dead body. But details of this case have been withheld from the public. All that we know is that it's a medical examiner from Bangkok, Thailand, who died. Officials said that this person had lots of contact, presumably autopsying people who died from coronavirus, but didn't come into any contact with living people with coronavirus. How do they know that this person was never in contact with any living people with coronavirus? Isn't the thing that all of us could be carrying coronavirus and spreading it out in the world and we don't know? Again, I am not saying that this is not true. From the very beginning, the CDC and the World Health Organization have said that bodies of the people who die from coronavirus are probably safe, but high-risk careers like embalmers or medical examiners who are puncturing the body, dealing with all its fluids, 
are potentially at a much higher risk if they don't wear the correct personal protective equipment, because we don't know yet how long the virus may live in the body after death. And that's exactly the thing, we don't know. So funeral directors have no idea how careful to be with the dead bodies coming into their care, and I see why that's scary. Of course, that fear can go too far and cause problems with things we know are not true. For example, recently 20 people were arrested in Chennai, India. They were arrested because they stopped the burial of a neurosurgeon who died after contracting the virus from a living patient. His family was attacked with sticks and rods, and they had to come back later to secretly bury the body without the family present. The reason these people attacked this family is because they were worried that burying the body of a coronavirus victim would spread the virus. No. Cremation and burial of a dead body does not spread coronavirus. No. So what's happening at my funeral home in Los Angeles? Again, we are not one of the hardest hit cities, but we've still had to make significant changes, just like everyone has. Our thing is having families come in and view and spend time with the body before cremation. And we've had to stop doing that. Because crematories in LA, to my knowledge, are all shut down. They're still cremating, of course, but funeral directors and families are not allowed to do any of the things they might normally do, including come inside the building. This is very difficult because I don't like to say no. I know my funeral director doesn't like to say no. It's the opposite of what we stand for. The reason I opened my funeral home was to be able to tell families, yes, you're in charge, that's your body, whatever you want to do. But no one gets to do what they want to do anymore. Welcome to coronavirus. One bright spot is that yesterday we were able to have a gorgeous, appropriately socially distanced natural burial in Joshua Tree. Out in the desert, it can feel almost normal. And I know my funeral director was very excited to be able to say yes after weeks of some very painful no's. So how will all of this change funeral homes and funerals in the long term? I haven't had a lot of time to think about it yet. Just kidding, it's all that I think about. Will I say more on this later? Maybe. Will I ever leave the state of Texas? Maybe. How are you all doing? My book writing is going great. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Funeral directors, I really hope you are doing well, taking time for yourselves, uh, journaling, self-care, I don't know, stuff like that. The National Funeral Directors Association put this out about funeral directors being heroes. My colleague pointed out, those are vampires. It's not that kind of pandemic. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Welcome to coronavirus. More money for them. LOL, 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 LOL. Put that camera on my mommy. Just, just leave it running, leave it running. Just kidding, it's all that I think about. It's all I think about. You're in charge. That's your body. Whatever you want to do. No. Yes. No. Maybe. It's not that kind of pandemic. The horsey goes in an L.